And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation. Looking at the Nepal earthquake, uh, at first I considered whether Bill Clinton uh, had the government of Nepal trigger the earthquake for a donation to the Clinton Foundation. But then I said, come on, they couldn't have done that. Then I realized that the Clintons are the luckiest couple on earth, America be damned. Because as you well know, the earthquake has wiped the uranium scandal off the uh, pages. It's gone. The greatest scandal, I would say since the Teapot Dome scandal, the greatest scandal in my lifetime, which is the uranium transfer scandal, the average dummy doesn't even know about it. No! Never heard of it. They don't even know what uranium is. But... Uh, it's a big scandal, nevertheless, and it's gone. The earthquake covered it up. Now, if you're laying in bed in the middle of the night, 3, 4 in the morning, and you can't sleep after a long trip, where you had a coffer for six straight hours from South America who didn't cover his mouth, and your mind starts to work on, what did you get? I mean, which virus did this guy spew into the air of the airplane? Why don't they force him to wear a mask? What kind of sick world are we living in that a guy could cough for six straight hours? from Miami to San Francisco, and the stewardess can't tell him to cover his mouth. It's like the early days of smoking. I mean, I've been in airplanes in the old days. I once flew from San Francisco to Japan 12 hours, 12 hours, a Japanese guy in front of me was smoking, one cigarette after the other. Those are the old days. Can you believe this? So I went to the stewardess. I said, I'm sitting in the non-smoking section. She said, yeah, but he's in the smoking section in front of you, one row ahead of you. I said, are you crazy? This is what went on in America. Now we have coffers on airplanes. They can cough for six hours and no one can say, stop coughing, put a napkin over your mouth because it might be a violation of their civil rights to infect the whole plane. You mark my words, the day will come just as the day came when, thank God, people were forbidden from smoking on airplanes. When if you appear on an airplane and you have a cold, they're going to give you a mask and tell you to wear it. And if you don't wear it, they tell you don't fly. You know, come fly with thee. But I want to go back to the news of the day, and then I'm going to get around back to Nepal. And the fact that the, uh, what I was getting at is if you're in the middle of the night, you can't sleep after a long flight, someone was coughing next to you, and your mind starts to race on bad things about to happen. And then you look at the, the Nepal earthquake, you could say, wait a minute, maybe the world is coming to an end. And you could become a catastrophist. It's a great word, a catastrophist. I'm sort of a catastrophist. I've always been a catastrophist. And uh, I'm in good company. I'm in the company of some great giants in history. But you look at the Nepal earthquake and you say, oh, boy, I never heard of Mount Everest being shaken by an earthquake. That's like the bedrock of the world. Mount Everest hit by an earthquake? Now, if you don't know history, whether it's geological history or history history, you can let the global warmest, the liars who were selling us that bill of goods, tell you it's due to Earth, uh, Earth's uh, warming and the Earth got upset. And it seized up and blah, blah, blah. But it's not true. And I looked into it, and I'm going to give you the history of earthquakes in Nepal. And you're going to be shocked to find out this is not the first earthquake in Nepal's history. That's number one. And then I want to talk about the police story in Baltimore, really. It's the rioters, the black rioters, the mainly the uh, Black Panthers who wrecked the city. And uh, what happened to the guy and all of that. Coughing on a plane, the Nepal earthquake. I got a full, full bill of stuff here I want to talk about. Uh, on the sap, the uranium scandal, huge deal, huge deal. But no one knows. Morons, morons. Some of them make a lot of money, and they're still morons. Some of them are good people, and they're still morons. I'll give you an example. I have a friend who has a father who's ninety years old, fought in World War II, walked across Europe. He's worked every day of his life. A diehard liberal Democrat, no matter what my friend says to his father about Obama's scandals, about the Clintons' uh, scandals, including the cash, you know, buying favors, he doesn't care. He's a good man. He's a smart man. He's a patriotic man. He loves America. But he is a lifetime liberal Democrat, and no amount of information will ever have him vote for an evil Republican. Do you understand that? Now, couple that ca catastrophe with what I'm about to tell you, and you'll see why it's hopeless. Someone sent me 
an announcement from a local junior college here in Santa Rosa, California, where the vermin who run the college are opening a dream center, a one-stop shop for illegal alien students. They built them a whole building, and they're going to give them freebies, one freebie after another, non-state-funded scholarships, state-funded institutional grants and waivers, Cal grants, all for illegal aliens, non-citizens. What about the students in this country who were born here, whose parents were born here, whose grandparents were born here, who fought for the country or not qualified for, for any of these scholarships? The answer is, is that there should be a massive class action lawsuit against the Santa Rosa Junior College and every other college in the country that provides scholarships for illegal aliens. They're all saying, well, welcome to our undocumented student center, the Dream Center. Come to DACA. DACA is the Deferred Action for Child Arrivals passed by the criminal Barack Obama administration. Written as an executive order by the evil president, enacted in 2012, that grants certain un illegal alien youth who came to the U.S. as children a certain type of permission to stay. Now they're adding to that, and they're giving them free scholarships. Free scholarships, free tuition, bending over backwards, while poor students in America, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, who are citizens, are told to go to hell and get in the back of the line. That's another topic I'm going to talk about. All mixed together. All mixed together in the admixture known as the Savage Nation. I'm brewing up the show. It's early in the day. It's time for a little happy music because another friend of mine said to me, I can't take it anymore. It's 18 months till the election. People are going to have a nervous breakdown till it happens. How much more can we take of this? I mean, the thought of Jeb Bush on a paleo diet and seeing him shrinking away is something I really don't want to watch. If Jeb Bush starts to look like Al Sharpton and Barack Obama in a few months, I'll say there's something in the water rather than something in the air in Florida. But I can't get too excited about the 2016 election. For God's sakes, it's almost May 2015. We have a whole life to live every day. How are people supposed to cope with this nightmare? Let me tell you how it's supposed to cope with it. Because I have to cope with it. I'll tell you how you cope with it. You get off your behind and you go out of your comfort zone and you go to places you normally don't go to. And guess what you see? If you're a white person, you see black people who actually are not rioting. You'll see black people who love America, who are working just as hard as you are. You'll see Hispanic people breaking their backs or working real hard. They're not working to work, overturn the system and steal America from you. And what happens is if we only look at the news, which is horrendous, horrible, terrible, you start to think that there's a race war out there promulgated by Obama. The world is coming to an end. The illegal aliens are going to turn us into northern Mexico. All of this may be true, but you can't look at it that way every day. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? There are ways to cope with it all. For God's sakes, I have to help you cope with it too? I will. Which leads me back in my circle to the earthquakes in Nepal. You say, okay, wow, this is horrible. Maybe it's global warming. Well, first of all, it has nothing to do with it because there were earthquakes in this area for a long period of time. And Nepal is located on the boundary of two major tectonic plates. And they've suffered large earthquakes over the centuries going back in recorded history to 1255 A.D. when they had the first recorded earthquake in the history of Nepal. And you know what happened in that year? During that earthquake, nearly one-third of the total population of Kathmandu were killed. And among those killed were the king of Kathmandu Valley. And the earthquake magnitude at that time is believed to be around 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale. Today, what is the, uh, sc the scale was what, Robert? About 8-something? 7-8, all right. So there was a 7-7 seven -seven back in 1255 uh, before Etzel's father created the Model T Ford. <clears throat> There was a 7-7 seven -seven back then before industrialization destroyed the universe. <clears throat> Another big earthquake was recorded in Nepal in 1260 AD during the reign of a king. Buildings, temples was destroyed. Many lives were lost in 1408 AD during the reign of another king. Major earthquake destroyed the te another temple. Many other buildings. And 1767, 1810, 1823, many, many earthquakes many earthquakes. 
So don't let the warmists panic you into thinking it's about global warming. Nepal is located uh, on two major tectonic plates on the boundary of the two of them. And in the past century alone, just four earthquakes more powerful than magnitude 6.0 have occurred within 250 kilometers of the 25th of April 2015 event. In 1934, there was a magnitude 8.0 earthquake known as the Nepal Bihar earthquake. It killed 10,600 people. It damaged the capital, 1934. It remains the most deadly earthquake in Nepal's history. Now, I'm not telling you this to diminish the human catastrophe of this current earthquake. I'm telling you to put it in context. History is very important. It's, it's very important for us. And so if you see that this devastating earthquake is devastating, but in context, there have been other devastating earthquakes in Nepal, maybe you won't stay up late and worry so much about whether the world is coming to an end. Maybe you'll worry about Obama passing the DACA Act, which has led to filthy little universities like Santa Rosa Junior College, run by diehard anti-American communists who have opened up a dream center, which they call a one-stop shop, quote, in a safe and caring place for undocumented students, new and continuing at Santa Rosa Junior College. Students will receive personalized support as they begin their college journey. And they're going to give them free scholarships, free this, free that. While poor white kids need not apply, they can go to hell. How do you like that? How do you like that? Now, that's an earthquake. That's a real earthquake. And then I want to talk about Baltimore when I come back and what happened to that guy in the van. I don't know how they broke his neck. They chained him up without a seatbelt. They gave him a zigzag ride to the police station. They snapped his neck. Terrible situation. And, of course, that permitted the animals to be unleashed in the streets. And the mayor said she had to give them room to express themselves. You hear this? Now, Newark was once a thriving city. Did you know about the Newark riots of 1968? Newark was a beautiful city in New Jersey, middle class beautiful. Then came the riots of 1968 uh, when uh, the city was burned to the ground. Again, because of permissiveness, again, because of a breakdown of law and order, again, because of liberalism, and we'll talk about that. And eventually, what I'm going to wind my way around to is the most important part of today's show, which is, is the world coming to an end? And I'll bring you to one of my mentors when I was a young man and what he wrote, Emmanuel Velikovsky, one of the great geniuses of art. Well, one of the great geniuses uh, of our time, I would say. He died in 1979. And his book, Worlds in Collision, which he published in 1950, which I discovered in the 60s, and Earth and Upheaval. You'll never believe what this man wrote and what he uh, thought was happening in this world and how great he was and how he was castigated by the scientific the science establishment for daring to step out of the doxies of the time, just as those of us in the conservative media are castigated for not buying the doxy of the left. And just as those in the science world today are spit upon for not buying into the big lie of Bill Clinton and Barack Obama and Al Gore of global warming, any scientist who presents evidence to the contrary is castigated and treated like an Old Testament leper. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I don't understand how liberal Democrats have the greatest luck on earth. I mean, just when Hillary was on the ropes... Just when a few people were starting to notice how corrupt they appear to be, after so many years of seeing the overt uh, pay-for-play and the corruption, I just thought maybe this time they're going to get it. And then an earthquake hits in Nepal, and there we go. All of the boys and girls in the media, the empty suits, the empty skirts. Earthquake, 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 Hillary is gone. Bingo. And the first thought was, I, maybe Bill Clinton had the government of Nepal trigger the earthquake for a donation to the Clinton Foundation using some Canadian uranium billionaire to funnel the money. I don't know. Anything's possible with them. 
And then, I mean, I, I haven't yet gotten any calls on airline horror stories of, of uh, sickness next to you on a plane. I swear to God, coming back from Miami to San Francisco, I have to tell you the story because I want a revision of airplane laws. I want anyone who's coughing to be forced to wear a mask. The Japanese are civilized. They go in a subway car. If someone coughs, they throw them off if they're not wearing a mask. My luck, I sit down. It's a 2-2 in the front of the plane. I'm in the aisle. Next to me is a guy from South America. I can hear the accent and his wife and a cough job. I had a six-hour cougher, and I don't mean an occasional. <clears throat> I'm not talking about one of those. You know, I'm not just saying a cough. We're going to say anything about a guy clearing his throat. I am talking about. <coughs> <coughs> now, I'm a germaphobe. I said, oh, God, no, I can't take it. So I started to get fidgety and paranoid, and uh, I didn't know what to do. So I knew if I spoke to the stewardess, they'd have me taped up and taken off the plane. She'd have the air marshals take me off the plane for asking them to intervene to cover the cough job. So, okay, I'm sure I have gum. I bring my own gum. Those days are over because of the ears. So I don't know what to do. I'm starting to fume inside. <coughs> I said, just if I could put up with the six hours, I'm jumping out of the, the safety door. And I can't do anything about it. So I try to say, okay, be positive, Savage. I said, I tell you what, he looks like a nice guy from Brazil or something. They're usually friendly, these guys. Big guy, strapping guy. I said, excuse me, senor, you want a piece of gum? I said, for your throat. I figured maybe if he chewed, he would stop. I said, maybe it'll help your throat. You know, I was being subtle. Oh, thank you very much, man. amigo. And he chewed. So he got a little moisture in the throat. He'd stop. The minute the gum was dried up, <coughs> six hours of this. Six hours of germophobia. Why don't the airlines require people to wear masks? Remember the days of smokers on airplanes? I do. It was a nightmare. A nightmare. That finally came to an end. Don't the stewardesses care about coffers and fumers and, sni and, and running noses? Of course they must. Excuse me, flight attendants. Pardon me. Stewardess, what a word. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Veto threats, negotiate with Iran, all while finding time to pray five times a day. <laughs> and it is no wonder that people keep pointing out how the presidency has aged me. I look so old, John Boehner's already invited Netanyahu to speak at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> real, real card that uh, Obama. He ought to replace Jimmy Fallon. That would be a good job for him. He's got the ears for the job. Jimmy Fallon. They got to get rid of Jimmy Fallon and put him in there. That's all he's fit for is a late night comedy show. Anyway, whatever. Here we are. Earth and upheaval. Worlds in collision. I'm a catastrophist. I am a catastrophist. I have found my place in time. So way back when, in the 1960s, when I was just coming up mentally, I f stumbled upon Velikovsky's books, Earth and Upheaval, and suddenly a lot of things made sense to me. I, had, I was a young biology student, and when Velikovsky's books, when I found them, they were written in 1952, I found them in the 60s. He, he didn't believe that there was an orderly sequence of evolution. He believed that there were catastrophes where the earth was uh, struck by celestial bodies, which caused great catastrophes, which created the earth and the animals, uh, changes, whatever. And the evidence he proposed at the time were, was so compelling to me, such as, how do you explain whale bones in the mountains of New Hampshire? And how do you explain the skeletal remains of African animals in Michigan. This is evidence. And when I started to read it, I was a, bo a young man who believed in, in, in proof, 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 fact, 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 evidence, evidence. I, I fell in love with the man's mind. And Emmanuel Velikovsky became one of my great heroes. And so he used his books to reinterpret the events of ancient history. And when he wrote Worlds in Collision in 1950, people were stunned by it. Now, the science establishment rejected him. They called him every name under the sun. And he used comparative mythology 
and ancient literary sources, including the Old Testament, to present his arguments that Earth suffered catastrophic close contacts with other planets, principally Venus and Mars, in ancient times, which caused a lot of havoc on this planet. And he was known as a catastrophist, a catastrophist. And he wasn't the first in the line of catastrophists. But Velikovsky also argued that electromagnetic effects play an important role in celestial mechanics. That sounds like big words, and you think you need to be a, a physicist to understand that. But these are big, big ideas, which may explain why the Earth is going through a slight warming phase right now, which is not to argue in favor of pollution or more uh, pollution or more carbon monoxide in the atmosphere, but don't get hysterical and buy into that rubbish. We all want a cleaner Earth, we all want a greener Earth, and we all want to not breathe in fumes, just as I don't want to breathe in viruses on an airplane or smoke on an airplane. I certainly have worked to save the environment all of my years in the uh, South Pacific, collecting plants and documenting species, trying to rescue the folklore while it could still be rescued and saving rainforests here and there. I've done it. So don't put me in the category of a cigar-smoking buffoon, because that's who I am not. But we're going back to the to the earth to make it a little his, you know a little newsy earthquakes Nepal, right? What does it have to do with anything? Well, it has a lot to do with everything, and it has to do with the fact that the world is not coming to an end. It has nothing to do with global warming. I can guarantee you that although they haven't yet done it, they're putting out position papers today, which you'll be reading over the next few days, alleging that the earthquake in Nepal is a novel event and it's related directly to global warming uh, mark my words you heard it on the savage nation that's what's coming so i do want to get into velikovsky's theories because he was so important in my life he was such a great genius i must tell you how much i love this man's writing he came from russia prosperous jewish family in belarus russia and he learned several languages as a child he was sent away to study at the medvednikov gymnasium in Moscow, where he performed very well in Russian and mathematics. He graduated with a gold medal in 1913. He was a prodigy, studied medicine in Montpellier in France, which is very, very interesting to me in many ways, and took pre -med, after taking pre-med at the University of Edinburgh. So anyway, he winds up in America in 1939, lecturing, and then war breaks out, and he stays in America, and he stays in New York. And he starts to write these books, which revolutionize people's thinking. And the book Worlds in Collision was such a huge bestseller. The average intelligent reader read it, and they loved it. Unfortunately for him, the science establishment rejected him. He was uh, considered an outcast, and they're lucky that they didn't have the ability to uh, castigate him further, but they would have. They probably would have burnt him at the stake for his books in the old days, just as they're trying to burn... Uh, anyone who disagrees with global warming today at the at the stake, they can't do it because we live in an, er, in an age where you can express ideas and present your evidence. But here's the, here's the thing that you know about Velikovsky. His ideas would today be called a creationist, sl have a creationist slant. Did you hear what I just said to you? And that's why he was hated by the establishment. And many of them opposed him. And, uh, you know, Worlds in Collision, Earth's in up, Earth in Upheaval. Phenomenal book. You've got to read the evidence. You've got to see what I'm talking about. And his, uh, his books were very important. Now, what did he actually say? Planet Earth has suffered natural catastrophes on a global scale over the eons, both before mankind was here and even during mankind's appearance. And these catastrophes in the geological record and... Uh, in the archaeological record exists. You can see it in the record. Now listen to what I'm saying to you. The extinction of many species on the earth, like the dinosaur, he said, occurred as a result of these catastrophes, not by gradual Darwinian means. So in other words, in that sense, <clears throat> he was a creationist. He believed in, <laughs> in God, I suppose. And for that reason, he was hated by the science establishment because it turned them on their ear. Did you hear what I just said? He said that, take a look at the dinosaurs, the pterodactyls that flew around. They died off, he said, because of catastrophes, not because they gradually died off by Darwinian means. And these catastrophes are recorded in the myths 
the written history, the legends of ancient cultures and civilizations. And if you read the Old Testament, and then you read the sutras of the Buddhists, and then you read the Hindu writings, and then you read the writings of the Aztecs, and then you read the writings of the Mayans, you'll find the similarity, an overlap rather, in what they are saying happened in their areas of the earth at the same exact time. You see what I'm saying to you? And it was Velikovsky who found that. And he pointed to the alleged concordances in the accounts of many cultures. And he said they referred to the same real events. I'll give you an example. The flood in the Hebrew Bible. You know about the flood, right? And uh, Noah's Ark. Well, the same memory of a flood on the earth that was recorded in the Hebrew Bible is written in the Greek legend of Deucalion and in the Manu legend of India. You get what I'm saying? So Velikovsky said that there's a cultural amnesia in the world where these literal records came to be regarded as mere myths and legends instead of being the truth. You follow what I'm saying to you? People said, ah, it's all bull crap. It's all a legend. But it was actually based on the truth. So what caused these natural catastrophes, which we're living through right now, by the way, natural catastrophes? In his analysis, and remember how, what a brilliant man he was, there were close encounters between our planet Earth and other bodies within the solar system, especially what are now known as the planets Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn. And because they moved on different orbits within human memory, they changed, the, they had effects on the Earth. Now, let me bring that down home right now. I recently received an email from someone who referred me to an article that our currently living Inuit population, better known as Eskimos to many folks, the Inuits claim that the Earth's axis has tilted slightly in our lifetime. It's moved slightly. The Earth has moved on its axis slightly, which I think is a, a known scientific fact right now. And this slight tilting of the axis has changed the hunting and the fishing up in the Arctic, as you would expect. Because if the Earth tilts slightly on its axis, even just slightly, that slight degree will expose their area to the sun's uh, energy at a different angle, perhaps a little warmer, and it's causing a little bit of the melting. But to now race from that to this catastrophic socialist concept that man is destroying the planet, we must do this, we must do that, we have to pay a tax, is rubbish. And the minute you see Clinton's involved, along with Gore, you know it's a lie. They're going to cash in on it. I'd be surprised if Clinton wasn't on his way to Nepal right now with Hillary to be seen walking in the rubble as they did in Haiti. Reminds me of the stories I was told when I lived in Honolulu. I asked, how did all of this land on Honolulu wind up being leasehold land owned by the five families that descended from the missionaries? M much of the land on Honolulu owned by the kids, the grandchildren, great-grandchildren of missionaries. So people would look at me with a cynical eye and say, well, Michael, the missionaries came here to do good, and they did very well indeed. Well, that said it all. That's Bill Clinton. Watch out for the do-gooders. They're out to do good. They wrap themselves in AIDS and the poor and in hunger and in earthquakes and <clears throat> volcanoes and tornadoes. And, and what do they do? They cash in in the hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. Why? They come to do good and they do very well indeed. Because man is a nice creature. We're nice people, so we fall for it. So let's go back eventually to Velikovsky. I'm having a very good time today. And we're going to talk about catast catastrophes in the past and the political catastrophe that we're living through right now under Barack Obama and the communist regime. Let's take a few quick calls, okay? I, I hope you don't mind that I'm not doing an ordinary kind of show because I'll tell you right now, this is the first day of the rest of my political life on radio, meaning till the election. And if you think I'm going to sit here every day talking about who's running and who's falling and who's moving, and he moved up and that one moved down and he took a shirt off and O'Malley looks good and he has abs and he almost has a, uh, an ab and she doesn't have an ab and he does and has a hair. Ah, oh, please leave me alone. I want to do other stuff. It's a talk show. Make believe you're in Cafe Savage. And when you spend this time with me, however short or long it may be each day, I'm the cafe owner. I'm a raconteur. I'm a renaissance man. And so if I'm interested in a topic, I hope you are too. If not, as my father said in his little antique store, what does sign say? I forgot what the sign said. I forgot already. He had a little sign, something about go away. 
something like, if you don't like it here, please leave, or something. I don't remember. I can't, I, my mind can't go from that to a, a, a joke. Can you believe how my mind is now into the science realm a little bit? And now it can't go back to the talk show joke realm? I, I can't remember the sign of my father's store. Anyway, let's take a call. Raj on WMAL. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Daniel Velikowski, great man. His words in collision stirred such a controversy that NASA wouldn't want to look at those things. I was in 1968. I was at NYU, went to the Courant Institute to find out some of the mathematical bases. I found then that he was at Princeton. And then I let it dry, let it sort of... Uh, what I found that the gradualism, which the Darwinian evolution had been, evolutionists had been talking about, was really not true. There was a, they called it punctuated equilibria. And then they tried to uh, wiggle around that, but just as you point out the archeological and other evidences, as Peter Varga, Hungarian geophysicist, who showed that the de-spinning rate changed by a factor of five, Hold, hold on, Raj. I'm following you, but I don't know if everyone is. Explain what the de-spinning rate means. That the rate at which the Earth is revolving around its axis, that rate is decreasing. Decreasing. So the rate at which the Earth's spinning on its axis is slowing down slightly, right? Yes. Well, okay. So as a result of this, what happens, Raj? Ooh, the day will lengthen. The U.S. Naval Observatory has been adding one second to the atomic clock every year and a half or two years. Well, is there any way Bill Clinton can cash in on that? I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it must be a way to cash in on the atomic clock or something to that. Anyway, what you're saying is fascinating. So the, the rotation of the Earth is slowing down. The day is longer, but that also exposes the Earth to the sun's rays for a longer period, correct? Yeah, true. It is also the fact that all decay is exponential. First to first order, all decay is exponential. So if we retro-extrapolate backwards, we don't begin with the slow rate of slowing now, linearly, but we retro-extrapolate it as a... Okay, Raj, hold on. I'm, I I love what you're saying. I think you've called once or twice over the years, and I think I attracted your attention today by talking about the Nepal earthquake and uh, Velikovsky's incredible idea that uh, species disappeared on the planet not as a result of gradual evolution, as the evolutionary theorists would tell us, but because of catastrophes brought about by Earth's upheaval and worlds in collision. Stay on the line. I'll be right back with Raj. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Look, we're talking about the Nepal earthquakes. They're not related to global warming. They're not related to the, what do they call it? I don't know what they call it now. They changed it eight, 18 different times. It's like Bill Clinton reinvented himself, so they reinvented the global warming. What a climate change, whatever. The climate's changing all the time, idiot. So the point is, is no one likes pollution. I don't like it. I don't like coffers on airplanes. I don't like smokers next to me. But don't tell me that you're going to give me fake, fake evidence to tax me even further. And by the way, the sign in my father's store, one of my listeners remembers it. Don't go away mad, just go away. Thank you very much. I would have given him a free copy of... Countdown to Mecca, which is coming out in only two weeks. So I got a lot of media to do. You'll notice I will not be on one conservative radio show. That'll be a bellwether of who's conservative. Only Laura Ingram will have me on. I'll let you know about the Rush Cartel. I'll get back to you in a few years. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk. 
Borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Zevin. We're in the sunshine because life is coming up roses. Everything's terrific. We've got a wonderful man in the White House who has the interests of America at his heart. He's transforming it into a better, safer, saner nation for all. Uh, we have a former president who thinks only of victims such as those in the Haiti earthquake. A man who thinks so much of the world and is so selfless with regard to himself and his wife Hillary that he would work feverishly to get the uranium ore of America in the hands of Russia to make certain that we can never build another atomic weapon. And, uh, I mean, this is the kind of world we're in. It's a perfect world. It's a good world. And that's why I have rose-colored glasses on. And we're talking about the Nepal earthquake and showing you how it's related in some way to, uh, n really, this history of earthquakes in Nepal going back centuries. But you're going to hear from the liars that it's related to the temperature and the this and the that and the Earth's mantle and the the structure with the degrees and the carbon dioxide that came up from the seltzer bottles in New York that exploded going back into the 1920s, pushed itself into the deep recesses of the IRT, and from the IRT it went under the Atlantic Ocean, and it tried to uh, escape in Italy, but because the Pope was so mean against gays, the gas had to continue all the way up into India, and, and it affected Nepal. Yeah, you'll hear that too, I can guarantee I can guarantee Listen, you know, when I'm in a good mood as I am today, I can laugh about all of it. Some days I feel like I'm behind the eight ball. Today I feel like I am the eight ball. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm the cue stick, not the eight ball. <clears throat> it's a beautiful world, and we do have a lot of bad people in it. We have a real lot of bad actors running America. I've never seen such a low level of grifter that we've seen now. In my day and age, we had grifters. Never at this level. Never would they have sold our uranium ore to Russia. That would have been considered a, a capital crime. They would have been tried for treason. They certainly would have been given a trial. If they could show any connection between it and any pay for play, they go to jail. Possible uh, execution for this. Now they wind up on the Jimmy Fallon show telling another joke. That's all. Another government jester. Jimmy Fallon. A government jester. They create them. NBC creates the government jesters through all their subsidiaries, and they get benefits from it. That's that's why they do it. That's why NBC creates this. The parent company that owns NBC and all the other companies, they get government contracts. Take a look at it. See if I'm making it up. So I'm not going to eat my heart out over it. That's all. I just kind of fit it in. And then I moved on to um, Emmanuel Velikovsky, Earth and Upheaval. And I talked about what caused the extinction of animals, Noah's Flood and how various cultural public, uh, cultural records in different times of history, like the Jewish flood in the Hebrew Bible, right, called the Jewish flood. Well, you find the same flood described in the Greek legends in the Deucalion. In the Mano legend of India, the same thing that there was a great flood. And Velikovsky put all this together, and he said these were not just myths and legends, but they were actual records of what occurred. And he said the reason we had forgotten they were real is because of what he called, uh, in his psychoanalytical background, he named it cultural amnesia. In America right now, we have political amnesia. We don't understand that Barack Obama is a representative of an archetype and that he has appeared in other countries and in other nations through time. I mean, I can play sympathy for the devil right now, but it'd be too easy. I don't have to do that. And there are the devils out there. And we're going to talk about all of these topics, including coughing on airplanes. And what else did I say I was going to talk about? I made a whole list before the show. Let's see. Coughing on airplanes. No, that's from the other day. Where'd this note come from? It was before Florida, this note. I named Chris Christie the poor sign Jersey demagogue. Wow. He's too obese and he's more reptilian than Machiavellian. Those are my notes from then. Chris Christie is a, is a figment of the past now. In my day, they most, he mostly could have owned was two diners in Passaic. 855-407-28. And that's not a bad business, by the way. Don't knock it. You don't have to accept money in the middle of the night if you own a diner. You can make an honest living. You don't have to meet outside a motel room and get a, a sack of cash. So anything you want to talk about will be related to these topics, I'm sure. Plus the great sound we have gathered for you from early in the morning. Obama did the thing. Ah. The roast that they do, I, would, I, I wouldn't go to it. 
I, I was. I was invited two years in a row years ago. World at Daily had a table. I didn't want to go to Washington to sit and listen to a, a president tell stale jokes to make him look like a nice guy. They're all grifters, and that's what the, what the problem is. There's a lot of other news I haven't gotten to yet. Maybe, maybe not. Now, the Clinton cash book is huge. It's the biggest scandal of my lifetime. The transfer of the uranium ore to Russia. Absolutely treason. And uh, and it's gone already because of the earthquake. Which, again, is a, maybe you think it's a bad joke. I'll repeat it again. When I woke up this morning, and again, I saw the earthquake was larger than we had heard about yesterday. More people dead. I had to think, really, whether Bill Clinton had the government of Nepal trigger the earthquake for a donation to the Clinton Foundation. Then I realized that's absurd. That couldn't have happened. And it's just that they're the luckiest couple on earth. America be damned. And that's the opening to hour number two of the Savage Nation. 855-407-282. Oh, I didn't get to the police beating in, in uh, Baltimore, which triggered the Black Panthers riots. And the uh, mayor of, uh, <clears throat> of the city telling them, telling the police to stand down. I want to talk about it for a minute. I'm not going to justify what was done to that guy. I don't even know what his crime was. Allegedly, they broke his neck or his spine in three places in the van. That means they gave him a little uh, crazy, crazy ride to the police station. They, put, they cuffed him to the, to, the husk, to the wagon, and instead of putting him in a seatbelt, as they were zigzagging at high speeds, he was jerking around like a marionette, and his neck broke, okay? Terrible crime if that's what happened. But let me tell you something. You mess around with the police, bad things are going to happen to you. I'll give you a personal story not that I know about. I knew a guy here in North Beach in San Francisco, a really bad, a bad player. He pretended to be a poet. He really wasn't. He was just a drunk and a heroin addict who had a way with words. But he, he finagled a lot of people into thinking he was a poet, and he never worked a day in his life. When he was on heroin, he was a genuinely nice guy because he was too stoned to bother anybody. When he drank, he was a violent animal. And I got into a few bad scenes with him, which aren't worth talking about. Well, one day he overstepped the line here in San Francisco, and there was a place in San Francisco called Enrico's in those days, a cafe on Broadway. And he was in there throwing meatballs at people. And I think he was throwing meatballs at people from the table. They weren't even his meatballs. You know, he got violent. Oh, the free meatball. He was flinging them at people in the street. The cops came and arrested him. He gave them trouble. They roughed him up and threw him in. They hated this guy because he was always causing trouble. He was a no-good Nick. Well, they got even with him. They put him in a van, a police van. What do they call it? Oh, you can't say paddy wagon. That's an insult to Irish people. I didn't even know what a paddy wagon was when I was a kid. <laughs> what do you call them? And they put you in the paddy wagon. I don't know what to call it. I'm not trying to be derogatory to Irish people, but... They put him in one of those things, a transporter to the police station, chained them to the side of the uh, thing, and the next thing we heard, he was in critical condition in San Francisco General. He hovered between life and death for about four weeks. What the heck happened? Well, the police didn't beat him up, but they put him into the huska, into the wagon, with a very violent felon who was also uh, being arrested, or let's say they got him in the van, and this guy gave him a beating, almost near, beat him almost to death. Am I justifying what happened? Absolutely not. Am I saying he deserved it? Not really. But it did happen. And the reason it happened is because he messed with the police one too many times. And so they are the law. They have the worst job in America. I don't know how anyone could do this job with this monster in the White House. And if you think Eric Holder leaving is going to make police work any easier, you're crazy. Because the woman coming in is going to make Holder look like Snow White by what I've seen she did in New York. One of her best friends is Al Sharpton. What more do you need to know that Al Sharpton was lobbying for Loretta Lynch? The lynch mob is coming. That's my headline. The lynch mob is coming. That's my uh, Savage Report headline. The lynch mob is here. How's that? Does that work for you? So if you want to talk about any of these topics, good for you. Actually, I want to play a song now called Goody Goody. Could you find Goody Goody? I don't know why, because I said good for you. It triggered something. This is the kind of show I do. It's purely intuitive, built upon hours upon hours and years upon years and decades upon decades of, of reading. <laughs> but when I say goody or good for you, I immediately thought of a song. All right, let's go to the callers. The minute I come back, callers on all these topics. I'm having a great day, which is a good thing in one way, but a bad thing in another. It's a good thing because I feel good and I'm going to feel good the whole show. 
it's a bad thing because I know my nature and tomorrow I'm going to crash and go into a depression that I can't even recover from. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Earth in Upheaval. Earth in Upheaval, Worlds in Collision. Written by Velikovsky, and we're living through political upheaval in America, political upheaval around the world, social upheaval in America, social upheaval around the world. They're trying to flood Europe now. The UN is demanding that Europe take in over a million uh, refugees from Africa and the Middle East, which will destroy these countries forever, because a mixed in with them will be illegal. Excuse me, will be terrorists. As sure as we have them here, as a result of our dumb, stupid, asinine. Uh, asylum policies put in by moronic pinheaded liberals in the Clinton era. They want, now want to do further, further damage. They didn't learn, didn't learn from the damage they did before. Why? Because there's money in it. What do you think? They're all do-gooders because they want to do good? How many times have I told you they came to do good and they did very well indeed? When you hear them talking about one charity or another charity with those smiles, you know they're ripping people off by the billions. Billions are, are sucked out for their friends and family for themselves as well. So watch out for the do-gooders. It doesn't mean you shouldn't try to help, but for God's sakes, don't you understand the grifters involved in these games? WABC, New York. Mike, welcome. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Calling to add a couple of uh, points on your discussion, your, your last caller before your breaks, about the Earth rotation and the days and the, and the, and the time. Fukushima, you know, the earthquake that, uh, that caused that tsunami and everything, that was actually a, had an impact on the rotation of the Earth as well. It's a measured thing. It, it adjusted time. Uh, I mean, it, wait, it was such a powerful seizure of the Earth that it changed what? The rotation of the Earth, the speed of rotation? Momentarily, in essence, stopped the Earth rotation, and, and they had to adjust the, the uh, atomic clocks because of it. That's Holy amazing. God, I really did, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Now, you add on top of that the fact that, you know, the Earth rotates on an axis. The axis also wobbles. That's a known fact. They measure it. They can see it. They saw that earthquake on the wobble of the Earth, you know? So that had an impact on it. And, and I just want to add one more other thing. You talked about, you know, when the, the gentleman said the, the Earth moves by a second. Well, the, when you add on top of that the wobble and, and the rotation of the Earth, the Antarctic is like humongously millions and millions more acres of ice this year, while the Arctic is, is uh, melting a little bit. Well, yeah, Absolutely, the- absolutely right, right, which is why the Inuits of the Arctic are saying that their hunting and fishing has changed because they said the Earth tilted on its axis. Right, exactly. So, you know, it's a natural thing that goes with all these dynamics. But it's not man-made. The Arctic isn't gaining ice because somebody in Philadelphia did something. I understand that we're all in the same lifeboat, and we all want a cleaner Earth, and we all want a safer Earth, but why must we buy the con men's arguments that unless we pay a tax to the criminals at the U.N., and unless we alter our lifestyle to the point where it becomes somewhat of a tribal system rather than a modern technological system, we're all going to die. That's rubbish. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay, so that summarizes it all. Mike, I'm sending you a copy of Countdown to Mecca because you're such an intelligent caller. See, I could do radio like this for hours and hours and days and days until my, my atomic clock stops. I'll tell you right now. But if I get trapped in politics, in their days, I don't think I can go on. I'll be honest with you. And you can hear it in others, too. They're wheezing, they're snorting. They can't because there's, there's a limit to how much you can hear about it. Why do you think the average person turns off on politics? Not they're stupid. They're not stupid. They feel powerless. They figure, why talk about something I can do nothing about? I told you about my friend whose father's 90 years old, a a wonderful man and a lifetime liberal Democrat. No matter what evidence my friend gives him about the damage that the Clintons are doing, the uranium and what Obama's doing to Israel. And the man is a, a Jewish man who fought in World War II, foot soldier all the way to Berlin, still will not vary from the liberal Jewish Democrat line. He won't change. 
And my friend doesn't know what, you know, I told him, don't argue with him. He's 90 years old, leave him alone. So what I'm saying to you is there's only so much you can do. If you think you're going to convert people's minds, uh, maybe you will, maybe you won't. By and large, you won't. Their minds are made up. The fault lines have been established in America, and we're all on our side of the fault line. And I don't think you're going to, you're going to just be wasting your time trying to convert the other side. The best we can do, I think, is stem the damage. That's about it, and go about with our lives. So what I'm saying is I have the gift of a radio show. I'd like to use it for reasons other than sitting and screaming about liberals. Some days I do, but today I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Today we'll talk about higher things, something higher, like celestial things, like why did the dinosaurs disappear? Why might America disappear under this administration? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Think about music. Think about art. Think about some of the great pieces you've seen in your life. And think about the great song, the music you've heard in your life. And think about even blues songs, jazz songs, classical music. Just think about the human being and what it's capable of. And you'll see what we really are and how we're not just a factotum of a political party. And we have to live through these these people who are called politicians. They're the lowest sort of uh, humanity, in my opinion. They're turning one race against another in Obama's case, one class against another in Obama's case, or they're outright grifters in the case of the Clintons, in my opinion, who use uh, uh, doing good a a as a method of stealing billions of dollars, in my estimation. But it can get a lot worse. Here, this just came out that the Labor Party candidate in England Ed Miliband, one of the worst people on the planet, has said that if he wins, he will make Islamophobia a criminal offense in the UK. In an interview with the Muslim News website, Miliband said a Labour government would make Islamophobia an aggravated crime and that the police would arrest people uh, having committed a hate crime just for speaking out against Islam. Uh, did you hear what I just said to you? And the police in England will be forced to record Islamophobic attacks right across the country. So if you think that things are bad now under Obama, you are right, my friend. But if you think they can't get a lot worse under a Hillary Clinton or worse yet, an Elizabeth Warren, you're mistaken. It can get a lot worse. There's another related story here. I've been meaning, uh, I got to get, the, hold on. I'm sorry, I got to reach across the, uh, the aisle here. I'll show you what a labor government can do. $58,000 finished speeding ticket based on millionaire's income. We all know that a graduated income tax is unto itself unfair. Why should I, as a high earner, pay more percentage-wise than a low earner? Why shouldn't we all pay a flat 15 or 20%? That's called progressive income tax. That's what the progressives have done. That means they want to tax you for your success. They want to limit your success. Well, I want to show you how bad it can get. In Finland, a man was recently fined $58,000 for traveling at a modest, if illegal, 64 miles an hour in a 50-mile-an-hour zone. Why? Because the man who was fined is a millionaire, and in Finland, the fines for more serious speeding infractions are calculated according to income. Did you hear what I just said? So that's what they're doing in Finland, in that mad little nation that was once a, a nation descended of Vikings. It's turned into a nation of Lilliputians. Did you hear this? In other words, the more you earn, the higher your fine should be. That's not fairness. That's crazy. That's what could happen here. It's so out of control. And so now, if you think it's bad under Obama where they're attacking the police and, and, and supporting the rioters, etc., that's why there was another riot just now in, in, in Baltimore now because they forced the police to stand down. Let's go to the callers. Gary on WJR, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hi, Michael. You know, I hear you talking about uh, Countdown to Mecca, and I love these books. And so I started at the beginning, and I'm halfway through Abuse of Power, and I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I love these books, all the authors. You're right up there with all these guys. And I, I just, just got to tell you, it's a fantastic book. Well, well no, Abuse of Power was a good book. It was set in San Francisco. Jack Hatfield was an original character. And... He's in the, you know, along the lines of the people who love Patterson and love all of those kind of books. But it's a little different because it has me in it, and it's also a political thriller. And it reflects in Jack and other characters a lot of my politics. 
which, which I enjoy. Which I well, you're getting a free so. copy of Countdown to Mecca, which will be out in just a week and a half, frankly. This is my best of the series. I, I, I can't say I swear to God because I don't know what's coming tomorrow. I'm not writing another Jack Hatfield book. It's the last of the trilogy. Trilogy, sorry. Countdown to Mecca, last one. If you read the others, you're going to love this one and then put them in a little set because I'm not doing any more. There's only a limited amount of... Sh uh, that's all I want to say. I'm not doing any more. I want to devote myself to my radio show and some nonfiction, one more book, and then I'm going to do the scholarship fund only. I want to just help kids in this country who are poor, who deserve to get ahead, who are being stepped on by the uh, progressive establishment, who are helping kids who don't even belong in the country, so-called dreamers, are being given a heads up and a step up above, uh, uh, get ahead of, ahead of. I read it to you from Santa Rosa Junior College. They created a Dream Act Center where they're inviting children, illegal alien children, to come in for free scholarships and free help. And they're telling the others, white or black or Hispanic or Asian, you need not apply. Our new affirmative action is devoted only to illegal aliens. That's the country under Obama. So watch out for what's coming. Now, let's go to the callers again. Did you give him a free copy? Did you get his name? Yes, 855 uh, Faye on WJR in Detroit. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, I have a theory for you to think about regarding the dinosaurs. Suppose the dinosaurs were on a different planet originally than Earth, and they habited another planet. And however those dinosaurs were destroyed, whether they starved to death, whether there was a flood, whether there was a comet, and the planet was broken up and then used to contribute to making the planet Earth, which would then explain why... That, that, that doesn't make any sense. The carbon dating uh, method, dis I mean, that makes no sense at all. There's no validity to that statement at all. No, no, no. It's just a theory. And well, the but well, a theory has to be based upon evidence. There's no evidence for what you said. See, the difference between a scientific theory and an, and a, um, an opinion is that an opinion can't be proven one way or the other. That's called politics. A scientific theory is built upon evidence. And if there is no evidence for what you just said, it's only an idea, an opinion, in other words. It is, I'm sorry, it is an idea or an opinion. Okay, thank you for the call. I, I'm glad she called because it enabled me to tell you the difference between an opinion, okay, which you can't prove or disprove, and a scientific theory, which can be potentially disproven. Again, this is the basic stuff you teach a seventh grade, a person in seventh grade science, which apparently Obama never got at Punahou High School. He was busy studying social dismemberment. But the mark of a scientific statement is something that could be potentially disproven. And so if you say man is causing global warming, well, that's a scientific statement, but it can be potentially disproven. So there's loads of evidence coming up disproving it, and so what they say is, well, the evidence doesn't count because it doesn't match our belief system. So therefore, they're not presenting you a scientific theory. They're presenting you a religious belief about man destroying the planet. And why are they doing it? Well, take a look at Bill Clinton's help for Haiti. Take a look at wherever Bill Clinton goes to help people. He goes to do good, and he does very well indeed. It's the oldest story in the book. That's all. Now let's move on. 855-400-7282. Now I'm getting a headache because I went into politics. I said, uh, Clinton, I said, Obama, I, I, just, I got a slight sinus headache from it. Chris on WMAL, welcome to the Savage Nation from Washington, D.C. Yes, Dr. Savage. The science writer you referred to was about 15 years ahead of the geologic theory of uh, plate tectonics and continental drift, uh, also known as uh, continents in collision. And... Uh, this theory explains both the whalebone in the mountains of New Hampshire and the, uh, the uh, earthquakes in Nepal. Uh, as, the, as the continents move around, it, it, shifts, uh, it shifts the crust as it's uh, elevated on the magma that has certain currents below the surface, and continents move back and forth and distribute species. And now India, uh, the subcontinent of India, is essentially crashing at low speed into Asia, which is uplifting the Himalayan mountains at about an inch and a half a year. Right. So you're confirming that Velikovsky was a genius ahead of his time. 
Yes, I, I just think that uh, it wasn't celestial uh, affairs, except for maybe the um, the asteroid that. Oh, oh, oh! You're saying it wasn't um, a result of meteorites or Jupiter or Saturn or Mars coming in close contact with the Earth, causing havoc, as Velikovsky alleges uh, in his writings. You're saying it's due to internal forces that the uh, continents are moving? Yes. Um, but, but, I, what would, wait, but what would, in your opinion then, what would cause continents to move? Well, the, the molten magma that is towards the center of the Earth is in liquid form, and it is... Um, circulated with currents, and these currents uh, cause um, the the plate tectonics, which is the the uh, congealed crust, to move about, and which is what we see as um, as the continents that are above the ocean. And you can see how the Hawaiian Islands will will move um, uh, along with the uh, break in the crust, so that each so that over, over eons, the uh, islands go in a certain direction, which is the same direction as the magma current below the surface. So um, all of these are a theory. But, but, Velikovsky, but Velikovsky also argued about the cultural record, which I find to be fascinating. For example, the biblical flood, Noah's Ark and all of that, the same story is told in other cultures about the same time. And so you're not arguing with that. You're saying the causation is what we're discussing. Right. And I'm not arguing with uh, the biblical record at all. In fact, uh, belief in God, I, I say this to uh, everyone I can get a hold of, is not mutually exclusive with the study of science. I mean, to me, the fascination with the creation is fascination with the creator. And anyone who's really studied science like you has somehow an innate feeling that this is created this didn't just happen well my mind has taken me back and forth on this question since i'm a little boy and at the end of the day i don't have the answer any more than the next man or else i'd be god himself so i have to live with my own belief system and as i sit on a, on a low mountaintop here in san francisco and i look out on the bay and i see the landforms coming up out of the water and i recognize that there are landforms underneath the water, and all of this could change in a moment, in the flash of an eye, that the whole thing could be thrown up in the air by some ev for some events I have no control over. What do I have to do but live in awe of the moment? That's what I have come back to, is I live in the moment, I breathe in the moment, I practice my breathing, and I say it's in God's hands, I can do nothing about it, I can't sit here and get nervous about it. Now, if that's a religious experience, then that's what I have on a fairly regular basis. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? You know what I'm saying? Yes, it does. In other words, I have awe for God's creation. But does that mean I'm going to sit here and get on my hands and knees and bow down to him three times a day or six times a day like Obama does? No. I, I'm not going to bow down six times a day because I do it with every breath. You have to find him in your own way. And by I way, do. I, 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 I actually say thank God every time I breathe in and I breathe out. Because without him, I wouldn't breathe in or <laughs> breathe out. Don't worry about being up today and down tomorrow. Those waves are the nature of science. And um, Oh, no, I'm not worried about my, my so-called... No, no, my moods are definitely a reflection of my, of my inner humors. <laughs> if you want to get unscientific about it. I live close to the San Francisco Bay. I watch the tides. Two up, two down a day. I'm, I know man is exactly the same way. We have ups and downs several times a day. Now, I don't mean every second. If you're swinging up and down every moment, then you're a manic depressive and you need medication. But if you have cyclical ups, two a day and two a day down, that's a perfectly normal cycle, whatever the number may be. And the, the psychiatric profession, unfortunately, has gone off the deep end by saying we should all be flatliners, and they try to stabilize that line with medication. That's the mistake that people are making. You can't, you can't stabilize it. You just have to learn to surf. There you go. Ride the wave. Hey, Chris, I'm sending you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca. It'll be out in only two weeks. Now, this is the kind of show I enjoy doing. It's that simple. Science, uh, fiction, uh, Velikovsky a little bit thrown in, a little of the news. 
that's what we have to do every day. We got we got long a long way to go till the election. We can't make this every day about the election because you'll get bored, I'll get bored. I'd rather talk about Mesopotamian cuneiform sources than about Barack Obama. I would rather talk about the Holocene period than than about the Ted Cruz. I would rather talk about the Vostok ice core studies than the lies that Al Gore puts out uh, for glo- global warming. I mean, the, the, the global catastrophe that Gore and Obama and the Pope are putting out is utter rubbish, and it's all a power grab. Do you understand that? Now, I'm a botanist by training. I don't practice botany anymore, and I want to just give you one word on that. I've collected some of the rarest plants on the planet. In fact, there's a famous picture of me on the Internet holding a monotypic species and a monotypic genus in my hand, and it was painted as an oil, and it's me holding Degenaria vediensis on one of my trips. Trust me, I know a lot more about the subject than meets the eye, and what I'm telling you is don't buy the big lie. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I only have a minute left in this hour, and many of my affiliates, some leave me, and they're not going to you know, get to what we're going to do in the third hour, but... I know I promised you tomorrow won't be the same as today uh, because to, I know when I'm in a manic phase like I am today, feeling good in the words for three straight hours, I usually go down the next day because the energy runs out and I shift to the other side. So I'm going to do tomorrow's show will be devoted to uh, bipolar issues. And I'll prove to you that uh, except in extreme and limited cases, there's no such thing as bipolar. It's an invention of the psychiatric establishment. It exists to a certain extent. Oh, I'm bipolar. That explains raping 12 people. Oh, he was bipolar, so he was able to cut the guy's head off. What do we want to listen to this? Human beings have many issues. It doesn't justify crimes against other human beings or against humanity. End of story, Pinocchio. So when I come back, I'm going to continue talking about earthing up people and how it all happened all at once that all at once animals were wiped out on the earth at once bing like that why the axis shifted join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage warning the savage nation contains adult language adult content psychological nudity listener discretion is advised And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It's just another manic Monday. Wish it was Sunday. Well, we're talking about polar axial displacement, Emmanuel Velikovsky, and what Obama has done to the United States of America, right now Baltimore is up in flames because of the race war that Obama has triggered. And I can guarantee you that this is all part of the program. Uh, of course, it's unfortunate the man was injured in the police van. It looks to me like it was done on purpose. You know, no one whacks him around like that and breaks his neck by accident. But the riots are, as you well know, could have been controlled with the National Guard. But Obama wants it to burn, baby, burn. And uh, outgoing Holder, well, here comes the lynch mob. You know who the theory, what the theory is on that lynch mob, don't you, Loretta Lynch? That the police caused the riots, not the Black Panthers. And so rather than talking about something I have no control over, I'd rather talk about polar axial displacement. And what does that mean? It means uh, uh, the ideas of great importance to those of us with ideas. And I was referring to Dr. Emanuel Velikovsky and his book, Earth and Upheaval. And he wrote things such as the encasing in ice of huge elephants, meaning mastodons, and the perfect preservation of the flesh shows that the cold finally became suddenly extreme 
as of a single winter's night and knew no relenting afterward. And in the stomachs and between the teeth of the mammoths were found plants and grasses that do not even grow now in northern Siberia. So what does that mean? What does it mean? Well, keep listening and maybe you'll find out what it means. Just before the last shift of the polar axis uh, in about 1587 BCE, the North Pole, some say, was located in the Atlantic Ocean between Spain and Quebec. And at that time, northern Siberia had a tropical and subtropical climate. And then what happened? The polar axis shifted within a single day's time these elephants were immediately frozen solid in their now frigid new polar environment. Can you believe these stories? You say, well, come on, you're making this up. No, it's very important you understand that there are theories about these things. And that when you hear these fraud, these con men, like Al Gore, Barack Obama, and the Pope, selling you a bill of goods that man is destroying the earth with, with industrialization and global warming, you have to understand this is all part and parcel of the liberal theology of doing good to do very well indeed. As you well know, Bill Clinton did very, very, he did some very good, he did good in Haiti, and he did very well indeed, didn't he? He went down there to do good, and he did very well indeed, the Clinton Foundation. That's how it works. So don't buy the whole package, please, do me a favor. And that's why I'm moving it around a little bit into some other areas. If you'd like to talk about these things, let's take some of the calls. WABC, no, let me go to a different part of the country, please. KCMO in Kansas City, great affiliate, powerful station, right in the heartland. Jeff on KCMO, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just calling about mankind's effect on climate change. And to quote Hillary Clinton, what difference does it make anyways? If we're on what I've believe is a hundred thousand year cycle of ice ages we're going to have to end up dealing with it eventually so either we learn to live with it or learn to engineer around it am i right, right but she but they're arguing that we're entering a heating period while some scientists are arguing we're entering the opposite which is a cooling period well, either way, it's all still the same. The Earth goes through cycles of getting hot and then getting cold. So ultimately, we just have to either learn how to engineer the planet or just... Yeah, yes, but they're arguing that it's a catastrophe. Uh, the Earth, the, uh, the glaciers are going to melt. The sea levels are going to rise and we're going to have another flood, which there's no scientific evidence for this. Right. So what would you argue? We should prepare for the floods? That Manhattan's going to be underwater? San Francisco's going to be underwater? That's nonsense. Well, right. But at the same time, eventually... Let, let me give you a little bit of empirical evidence. I was a boater for 25 years. I haven't been boating for two years now, but I used to read tide table, tables every day. I went out on my boat. I have to read the tide charts. Even though I had a, a, you know, a fathometer which, which can read the depth, I very carefully read the tide, tidal charts. So I knew I was going out on a certain level. I didn't want to come in on a low tide for obvious reasons, right? It, something ancient mariners have known about from the beginning of uh, the maritime world. I look at these tide charts and I look at the history going back 100 years. I have not seen a centimeter change in the level of the, of the uh, water here in the Bay Area of San Francisco. Not one centimeter has it changed. Well, in 100 years, it's not even a blink of the eye. Yeah, but what I'm saying is they're telling me that the world's coming to an end. You think it would have moved a millimeter in 100 years, wouldn't it? If the, if, the, if the glaciers are melting at such a rapid rate, I would have seen a millimeter of water go up. It hasn't, not even a centimeter. Well, everything's a catastrophe to them. Yeah, all right, so th now wait. You just said something very interesting. Here is a problem. Everything is a catastrophe to the progressive liberal. I understand that. You know, never let a crisis go to waste. But we on the conservative, patriotic, traditional side must be very careful that we don't fall into the same trap of becoming catastrophists where everything is a catastrophe because we will be dismissed as nuts. However, there is a catastrophe. We have a social catastrophe with Obama. Right now, Baltimore uh, is on fire because he has triggered a race war in this country. He has made the police evil and the black people victims. So Baltimore is burning. And that is a result of the cultural or social catastrophe of the socialist, communist, Islamist in the White House. That's the problem. There is a catastrophe, a real catastrophe. 
And that's why we're talking about these things. You look at the news, there is news. There's real news out there. Chaos. Baltimore's on fire. Why is it on fire? Because the comedian in the White House who was so busy telling lame jokes to show you what a nice guy he really isn't uh, didn't want to say anything about the situation that could have been avoided. Why? He could have reigned in the Black Panthers. He could have sent in the National Guard or told the police that under no, under no condition can Malik Shabazz be allowed in that city. Under no condition can these rioters and looters be allowed in that city to trigger this kind of situation. There are several officers who are not responsive right now. Some have broken bones. Uh, one is unresponsive. He's laying there unresponsive. There's looting and violence right now. A CVS store is in flames. Police vehicles on fire. Now, what is that doing, tell me, for the tragedy of this black man who was injured in the van? Tell me how that helps. It helps nothing. This is what I mean by the, by the brown shirts of Adolf Hitler. This is how it worked. When the communists were unleashed on German society, they created a chaos. The people did not, didn't like the chaos. They didn't like the lawlessness of the communist mobs. And what was the counterpoint to that? Right-wing groups were formed under Adolf Hitler. The SA was formed to beat up and control the communists. And that led to Adolf Hitler's rise. That led to World War II. That led to the extinction, extermination of millions of people. We certainly want to avoid the counterreaction. And I'm telling you right now that unless we get a stabilized government that can stabilize these random maniacs, we're liable to finally get what this country has been screaming for, which is law and order. And let's pray that the law and order doesn't take us down the fascist road because every action will have a reaction. It's a law of thermodynamics. The illegitimate radical left, in this case the Black Panthers and the communists, who are burning Baltimore, <coughs> is an action. And the reaction is just liable to be bigger than they are because there's only so much crap people are willing to take until they react. And that's a bad thing. And that's where a government is supposed to step in to preserve social order. But Barack Obama, the comedian who gave his big performance the other night at the, at the dinner, the correspondence dinner, showing us he's not a Muslim, he's not a communist, he's not a socialist, he's a real all-around nice guy, that's all. Where is he today? Why is he not stepped in? Burn, baby, burn. I saw it in Newark in 1968, and I'm watching it right now in Maryland in 2015. Some things never change, and I'll tell you something else. Newark never recovered from the hippie-induced riots of 1968, and that is because progressivism destroyed Newark, and this progressive government is going to destroy Baltimore. That's my position. I'll be back in a moment on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So the uh, rioters are having a field day in Baltimore. Stores are on fire. The blacks are looting stores in uh, Baltimore. Yes, I'll say it like it is. Um, what should I, I do with the newspapers do? We don't know what's going on. We're all stupid. We don't know who triggered this and why it's being allowed to go on. Let me ask you something. If a group of conservatives rioted like this in the city, do you think that the invisible head of the Department of Homeland Security would have called out the armored personnel carriers by now and used some of those 9 millimeter hollow points on them? I think that DHS would have come out by now if Baltimore were being uh, assaulted by mobs of whites, don't you think? And yet Elijah Cummings says, oh, he's the congressman, it's peaceful. Well, ask the cop in a coma if it's peaceful. Ask the owner of the CVS store if it's peaceful. Liars, all of them, these progressives. Here's another joke for you. Don't want to get too depressed. Pinocchio, Snow White, and Superman are out for a stroll in town one day. Well, as they walk, they come across a sign, beauty contest for the most beautiful woman in the world. I'm entering, said Snow White. After half an hour, she comes out and they ask her, well, how did you do? First place, said Snow White. Well, they continue walking and they see a sign, contest for the strongest man in the world. I'm entering, says Superman. 
After half an hour, he returns and they ask him, well, how did you make out? First place, answers Superman. Did you ever doubt it? Well, they continue walking when they see a sign. Contest, who is the greatest liar in the world? Pinocchio says, this is mine. Half an hour later, he returns with tears in his eyes. What happened, they ask. Who the heck is Hillary Clinton, asked Pinocchio. <laughs> That's from one, from one of my listeners. So, you know, humor does have its, have its place in the world, even in dark times like these. Update, riot have set a police car ablaze in Baltimore, and looting has begun, as I said, CVS stores. Nothing to do with the cause, but it's just an opportunity to burn, baby, burn. But Democratic rep Elijah Cummings, never known to a speak the truth, says that the riots are peaceful. Update, police have sustained broken bones after black Baltimore high schoolers calling for the purge struck police with heavy bricks, rocks, and pipes. One officer is unconscious and unresponsive. Thank you, Al Sharpton. Thank you, Eric Holder. Thank you, Barack Obama. Go tell your jokes tomorrow about how wonderful you all are and how progressives really want to save the world. Baltimore may never recover. It's time to call out the National Guard and get these uh, people under control. If need be, use rubber bullets. That's what they are for. That is how crowds are controlled. You start with water cannons, then you go to the rubber bullets. But you don't let a virus like this spread because it will spread. As Newark tells us, it can get very bad indeed. Newark was once a thriving, beautiful, middle-class city. And it was burnt to the ground by rioters in 1968 because the progressives at that time justified the rioters, justified the rioting, and opposed the police. So history is repeating itself. Let's hope it doesn't get out of control. And let's hope that somebody who's an adult in Maryland and in Washington steps in, calls out the National Guard, and gets these crowds under control. Louise wants to comment on this. Louise, welcome to the Savage Nation. Uh, communities don't recover from this kind of uh, catastrophe, violence, political stuff. Look at Watts, Jersey City, Harlem, North Minneapolis, sections of L.A. They just, the businesses leave and they turn into crime-ridden hellholes. Yeah, but then they can blame the police for it. No, it's not the police. No, blame the police, blame uh, Whitey, blame society. Blame everybody but the rioters and the out-of-town agitators. Blame everybody but Al Sharpton. Blame everybody but Eric Holder. Blame everybody but Barack Obama. Just blame everybody but the rioters themselves. Isn't that the way it works in a progressive society? That's the way it works, but I want to tell you one more thing. In 1968, that Democratic convention that turned into a riot in Chicago, that was funded by the Democratic Party. I was 16 at the time, and they were going to finance me to go to Chicago. They had all this story about where I'd be staying, what I'd be doing, and my mother said to me, I was 16, you can't get into the convention. They only got bad plans. And when my friends came back, I found out that they didn't get hotel rooms. They didn't have anywhere to shower. They were just dropped off at the riot site. So they were using you as an out of, like a kid being used, like the kids are being used in Baltimore now to attack the police. They're getting black kids out of the schools to throw bricks and uh, stones at the cops now in Baltimore. And Obama has nothing to say. How do you like that? Why is Obama not opening up his big fancy mouth today about all of this? This is the Democrat. Well, this is the Democrat, socialist, Islamist machine at work. Where is uh, the Republican Party on this? Why am I speaking out on it? Why have we heard nothing from any of the leaders of the Republican Party? Why is the chaos in Baltimore allowed to continue? Where is Jeb Bush on this? Where are those who would be our leaders on this? Nowhere to be found because they're not our leaders on anything. They're just politicians at the end of the day. And so the gangs now are out of control in Baltimore. Uh, just as we had in Ferguson, we have the same thing now in Baltimore. And unless the uh, leaders of Baltimore step in and give the police more power and bring in the National Guard with rubber bullets and water cannons, it's going to get a lot worse. It's not going to stop itself. These things don't stop. Not when you have Black Panther Party uh, troublemakers out there looking for burn baby burn theories. You understand that? So here we are. I mean, I could go back to Velikovsky and all of that, but... You know, I, I started the show by talking about is the world coming to an end? And I said, of course it is not. 
And we talked about cataclysms and celestial bodies and electromagnetic forces and the disappearance of species on the Earth. And now we take it right down home. And here in America, because of the progressive president, because of outside agitators who should have been in prison a long time ago, grifters, the city is burning. And the police are on the front lines once again, taking all of the hatred, all of the pain, all of the violence stimulated by this progressive government. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Have the greatest luck on earth. I mean, just when Hillary was on the ropes, just when a few people were starting to notice how corrupt they appeared to be, after so many years of seeing the overt uh, pay-for-play and the corruption, I just thought maybe this time they're going to get it. And then an earthquake hits in Nepal, and there we go. All of the boys and girls in the media, the empty suits, the empty skirts. Earthquake, 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 Hillary is gone. Bingo. And the first thought was, I maybe Bill Clinton had the government of Nepal trigger the earthquake for a donation to the Clinton Foundation, using some Canadian uranium billionaire to funnel the money. I don't know. Anything's possible with them. Someone sent me an announcement from a local junior college here in Santa Rosa, California, where the vermin who run the college are opening a dream center, a one-stop shop for illegal alien students. They built them a whole building, and they're going to give them freebies, one freebie after another, non-state-funded scholarships, state-funded institutional grants and waivers, Cal grants, all for illegal aliens, non-citizens. What about the students in this country who were born here, whose parents were born here, whose grandparents were born here, who fought for the country or not qualified for, for any of these scholarships? The answer is, is that there should be a massive class action lawsuit against the Santa Rosa Junior College and every other college in the country that provides scholarships for illegal aliens. They're all saying, well, welcome to our undocumented student center, the Dream Center. Come to DACA. DACA is the Deferred Action for Child Arrivals passed by the criminal Barack Obama administration. Written as an executive order by the evil president, enacted in 2012, that grants certain un illegal alien youth who came to the U.S. as children a certain type of permission to stay. Now they're adding to that, and they're giving them free scholarships. Free scholarships, free tuition, bending over backwards, while poor students in America, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, who are citizens, are told to go to hell and get in the back of the line. Another friend of mine said to me, I can't take it anymore. It's 18 months till the election. People are going to have a nervous breakdown till it happens. How much more can we take of this? I mean, the thought of Jeb Bush on a paleo diet and seeing him shrinking away is something I really don't want to watch. If Jeb Bush starts to look like Al Sharpton and Barack Obama in a few months, I'll say there's something in the water rather than something in the air in Florida. But I can't get too excited about the 2016 election. For God's sakes, it's almost May 2015. We have a whole life to live every day. How are people supposed to cope with this nightmare? Let me tell you how I'm supposed to cope with it. Because I have to cope with it. I'll tell you how you cope with it. You get off your behind and you go out of your comfort zone and you go to places you normally don't go to. And guess what you see? If you're a white person, you see black people who actually are not rioting. You'll see black people who love America who are working just as hard as you are. You'll see Hispanic people breaking their backs who are working real hard. They're not working to work overturn the system and steal America from you. And what happens is if we only look at the news, which is horrendous, horrible, terrible, you start to think that there's a race war out there promulgated by Obama. The world is coming to an end. The illegal aliens are going to turn this into northern Mexico. All of this may be true, but you can't look at it that way every day. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? There are ways to cope with it all. For God's sakes, I have to help you cope with it too? I will. My producers found a little article on the uranium scandal. This came out in the year... 06. It was appearing in the Durango, Colorado newspaper, called the Durango Telegraph. You're not going to believe the title, How Russians Got Our Uranium. The Russians are coming to the southwest and plan to take much of the region's uranium home with them. The Russian government, which recently purchased the mining company Uranium One, 
has big designs on uranium reserves in Utah's Canyon Country and has opened an office in Durango. Watchdogs are concerned that the U.S. is effectively giving away resources to foreign companies and that locally mined and milled yellow cake will soon find its way to Iran. Last week, a Tom Dredemozolo, I can't pronounce it, A-R-M-Z, a mining conglomerate owned by the Russian government, completed the purchase of Uranium One, a Canadian company. ARMZ's parent company is Rosatom, the Russian nuclear agency, and the deal went forward in spite of objections from four members of the U.S. Congress and a U.S. Department of Treasury inquiry. Now, remember when this was. This was in 06, 06, long before Imelda was Secretary of State. The deal gave ARMZ, operating as Uranium One, control of all of the Canadian company's international assets, which stretch from Central Asia to the Central United States. Among those assets is control over more than 10,000 acres of uranium mining claims in southeast Utah, ownership of the Utah town of Tickaboo near Lake Powell, and control of the inactive Shutaring uranium mill there. The consolidation makes Uranium One the fifth largest uranium producer in the world. Shortly before the transaction, the Russian company opened the regional headquarters in Bodo Park, Utah. A few more paragraphs for those of you who are bored already and would rather talk about transgender actors. The perspective on the ground in the southwest does not reflect Zivov's optimism. Courtesy of a loophole in the 1872 mining law, the Russian government operating as Uranium One will be tapping the region's uranium virtually free of charge. The mining law was signed into law by President Ulysses S. Grant, in order to encourage rapid settlement of the American West. The law continues to allow companies to stake and develop mining claims without paying royalties to the United States government. We've been seeing this trend for the last 10 to 15 years. Remember, this was written in 06. Explained Jeff Parsons of the Western Mining Action Project. Multinational companies have gradually been taking over mineral rights all over the West. Then they benefit greatly from our 19th century mining policy, where they essentially get the minerals for free and never have to pay a royalty. Conclusion. The case of Uranium One could be an especially difficult pill to swallow. First, the Russian government will be tapping the West's uranium free of charge and likely exporting it to Europe and Asia. Second, ARMZ has acted as the source of uranium for Iran's rogue nuclear program, meaning that yellow cake mined in Utah could find its way into reactors in Tehran. How Russians Got Our Uranium, Durango Telegraph, 110106. The story came out shortly after the Clintons did a deal with Kazakhstan. Which leads me back in my circle to the earthquakes in Nepal. You say, okay, wow, this is horrible. Maybe it's global warming. Well, first of all, it has nothing to do with it. Because there were earthquakes in this area for a long period of time. And Nepal is located on the boundary of two major tectonic plates. And they've suffered large earthquakes over the centuries, going back in recorded history to 1255 A.D., when they had the first recorded earthquake in the history of Nepal. And you know what happened in that year? During that earthquake, nearly one-third of the total population of Kathmandu were killed. And among those killed were the king of Kathmandu Valley. And the earthquake magnitude at that time is believed to be around 7.7 .7 on the Richter scale. Today, what is the uh, sc the scale was what, Robert? About 8-something? 7-8, all right. So there was a 7-7 back in 1255 uh, before Etzel's father created the Model T Ford. <clears throat> there was a 7-7 back then before industrialization destroyed the universe. <clears throat> Another big earthquake was recorded in Nepal in 1260 A.D. during the reign of a king. Buildings, temples was destroyed. Many lives were lost in 1408 A.D. during the reign of another king. Major earthquake destroyed the te another temple. Many other buildings. And 1767, 1810, 1823, many, many earthquakes. Many earthquakes. So don't let the warmest panic you into thinking it's about global warming. Nepal is located uh, on two major tectonic plates, on the boundary of the two of them. And in the past century alone, just four earthquakes more powerful than magnitude 6.0 have occurred within 250 kilometers of the 25th of April 2015 event. In 1934, there was a magnitude 8.0 earthquake known as the Nepal-Bihar earthquake. 
It killed 10,600 people. It damaged the capital, 1934. It remains the most deadly earthquake in Nepal's history. Now, I'm not telling you this to diminish the human catastrophe of this current earthquake. I'm telling you to put it in context. History is very important. It's, it's very important for us. And so if you see that this devastating earthquake is devastating, but in context, there have been other devastating earthquakes in Nepal, maybe you won't stay up late and worry so much about whether the world is coming to an end. Maybe you'll worry about Obama passing the DACA Act, which has led to filthy little universities like Santa Rosa Junior College, run by diehard anti-American communists, who have opened up a dream center, which they call a one-stop shop, quote, in a safe and caring place for undocumented students, while poor white kids need not apply, they can go to hell. How do you like that? How do you like that? Now, that's an earthquake. That's a real earthquake. And then you look at the, the Nepal earthquake, you could say, wait a minute, maybe the world is coming to an end. And you could become a catastrophist. It's a great word, a catastrophist. I'm sort of a catastrophist. I've always been a catastrophist. And uh, I'm in good company. I'm in the company of some great giants in history. But you look at the Nepal earthquake and you say, oh, boy, I never heard of Mount Everest being shaken by an earthquake. That's like the bedrock of the world. Mount Everest hit by an earthquake? Now, if you don't know history, whether it's geological history or history history, you can let the global warmers, the liars who were selling us that bill of goods, tell you it's due to Earth's uh, warming and the Earth got upset and it seized up and blah, blah, blah. But it's not true. I realize that the Clintons are the luckiest couple on Earth, America, be damned. Because as you well know, the earthquake has wiped the uranium scandal off the uh, pages. It's gone. The greatest scandal... I would say since the Teapot Dome scandal, the greatest scandal in my lifetime, which is the uranium transfer scandal, the average dummy doesn't even know about it. No, never heard of it. They don't even know what uranium is. But uh, it's a big scandal nevertheless, and it's gone. The earthquake covered it up. I want to shift, though, to something entirely different. A plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors except the hijacker. And a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the plane wreckage. A carefully plotted terrorist attack has been put into motion, and the resulting chaos might be enough to push America toward another costly war. Countdown to Mecca. It's a gripping page-turner. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. We have a former president who thinks only of victims such as those in the Haiti earthquake, a man who thinks so much of the world and is so selfless with regard to himself and his wife Hillary, that he would work feverishly to get the uranium ore of America in the hands of Russia to make certain that we can never build another atomic weapon. I mean, this is the kind of world we're in. It's a perfect world. It's a good world. And that's why I have rose-colored glasses on. And we're talking about the Nepal earthquake and showing you how it's related in some way to, really, this history of earthquakes in Nepal going back centuries. But you're going to hear from the liars that it's related to the temperature and the this and the that and the Earth's mantle and the the structure with the degrees and the carbon dioxide that came up from the seltzer bottles in New York that exploded going back into the 1920s, pushed itself into the deep recesses of the IRT, and from the IRT it went under the Atlantic Ocean, and it tried to uh, escape in Italy, but because the Pope was so mean against gays, the gas had to continue all the way up into India, and, and it affected Nepal. Yeah, you'll hear that too, I can guarantee. <laughs> Listen... You know, when I'm in a good mood as I am today, I can laugh about all of it. Some days I feel like I'm behind the eight ball. Today I feel like I am the eight ball. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm the cue stick, not the eight ball. It's a beautiful world, and we do have a lot of bad people in it. We have a real lot of bad actors running America. I've never seen such a low level of grifter that we've seen now. In my day and age, we had grifters. Never at this level. Never would they have sold our uranium ore to Russia that would have been considered a, a capital crime. They would have been tried for treason. They certainly would have been given a trial. If they could show any connection between it and any pay for play, they go to jail. Possible uh, execution for this. Now they wind up on the Jimmy Fallon show telling another joke. That's all. Another government jester. Jimmy Fallon. A government jester. They create them. 
NBC creates the government jesters through all their subsidiaries, and they get benefits from it. That's that's why they do it. That's why NBC creates this. The parent company that owns NBC and all the other companies, they get government contracts. Take a look at it. See if I'm making it up. So I'm not going to eat my heart out over it. That's all. I'm just kind of fit it in. And then I moved on to um, Emmanuel Velikovsky, Earth and Upheaval. You know, talked about what caused the extinction of animals, Noah's flood, and how various cultural public... Uh, cultural records in different times of history, like the Jewish flood in the Hebrew Bible, right, called the Jewish flood. Well, you find the same flood described in the Greek legends in the Deucalion. In the Manu legend of India, the same thing that there was a great flood. And Velikovsky put all this together, and he said these were not just myths and legends, but they were actual records of what occurred. And he said the reason we had forgotten they were real is because of what he called, uh, in his psychoanalytical background, he named it cultural amnesia. In America right now, we have political amnesia. We don't understand that Barack Obama is a representative of an archetype and that he has appeared in other countries and in other nations through time. And there are other devils out there. I named Chris Christie the poor sign Jersey demagogue. Wow. He's too obese and he's more reptilian than Machiavellian. Chris Christie is a, is a figment of the past now. In my day, the most, he mostly could have owned was two diners in Passaic. And that's not a bad business, by the way. Don't knock it. You don't have to accept money in the middle of the night if you own a diner. You can make an honest living. You don't have to meet outside a motel room and get a, a sack of cash. Obama did the thing. Ah, the roast that they do, I, was, I, I wouldn't go to it. No, I was. I was invited two years in a row years ago. World at Daily had a table. I didn't want to go to Washington to sit and listen to a, a president tell stale jokes to make him look like a nice guy. They're all grifters, and that's what the, what the problem is. There's a lot of other news. Now, the Clinton cash book is huge. It's the biggest scandal of my lifetime. The transfer of the uranium ore to Russia. Absolutely treason. And, uh, and it's gone already because of the earthquake. Which again is that maybe you think it's a bad joke. I'll repeat it again. When I woke up this morning, saw the earthquake was larger than we had heard about yesterday, I had to think, really, whether Bill Clinton had the government of Nepal trigger the earthquake for a donation to the Clinton Foundation. Then I realized that's absurd. That couldn't have happened. And it's just that they're the luckiest couple on earth. Savage.